Ciao. I'm Julia. Julia K. I'm glad you are here. Nobody has visited me in ages. It's been years now. I must tell you my story, but I don't know where to begin. There is so much that... I should start from my childhood, but my memories of these times are vague. I only remember the summer of 1929, when they sent me off to stay with my nanny. Nanny, will you tell me the story of the White Lady? No, little sparrow. Not tonight. A fog is coming, see? Yes. I know that when it's foggy, the lady kills young women. But why is she so evil? You see, Julia, pain and suffering can make us do evil things, even if we're not actually bad. Just like soldiers have to kill other soldiers. I like the lady I've decided, Nanny. She must be in so much pain. The poor dear. She still scares me a little, though. Soon I'll be a young woman, and she could kill me. Does she kill those who love her? Of course not. That makes me feel better because I love her. But what about Martha? Would she be in danger? Your sister is with your mother, so do not worry. Do you miss them? No. I mean... Yes, I miss Martha a little, but I love spending time with you. Now, go to sleep, little sparrow. It's getting late. Okay, Nanny. I'll go to sleep and dream of the lady. Was she beautiful? She was beautiful. Yes, very much so. Then she'll be beautiful in my dreams. And will I be beautiful just like her? You'll be even more beautiful. Listen, Nanny. Since the lady won't harm me because I love her, and since you're not a young woman, could you tell me her story, even if it's foggy outside? Please. Oh, please, then I'll sleep. I promise. Oh, all right. You always get your own way. I loved Nanny and I loved that story. Every time I heard it, it sounded like a new and more mesmerizing tale. Every night I would ask her to tell me about it, even though it scared me. Even now I can remember every single day of that time and how happy I was. According to an ancient legend, the lakes of the area are haunted by the spirit of a young woman who was killed by the man she loved. She was expecting a lover stroll by the lake, gazing out at the old tree growing on the lake's island. So much hope and desire, but death, not love, was awaiting her. Oh, the poor dear. That's not fair. Life isn't fair, Poppet, but that's the way it is, and we must learn to deal with it. Okay, I'll try, but it makes me so mad. Keep on reading, Nanny. In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. So he was hanged on the small island, in the middle of the very same lake where he had killed the girl. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, has been imprisoned in the depths of the lake. She grieves eternally for the loss of the man she loved. 
When fog arises, the White Lady is known to leave the waters of the lake and roam the woods, looking for her long lost love in vain. Within the fog of dawn, hunters have claimed to hear the wailing of a woman in the distance. Every time the sad memory of the night she perished stirs in her soul, she takes the life of a young woman by slaying such a life in its youth, even just for an instant. The lady feels free from the burden of her pain. Good night, Nanny. Good night, my love. I spent almost three years with the nanny, but when I came home, I quickly forgot how to be happy. My memories do not return until 15 years later, in 1944, when I stayed in that house. I enjoyed setting up cameras in the woods by the lake. My father created a device that attached to the cameras. It would make them take pictures at set intervals. I was trying to photograph animals, or whatever else was in that damned place. Reel off the film. Open the camera. Remove the old roll of film. Put the new film in. Close the camera. Load the film. Activate the timer. Almost ready. Now to bring the image into focus. There's something floating on the surface of the water. If I frame it better, I might be able to see what it is. What? Is that a person? I must help them. at the idea that someone might have drowned in my lake. The lake was my world, where I would spend entire days daydreaming. I would lose myself in my thoughts, but that was a rude awakening. So terrible.
I instantly noticed that the person was wearing one of my dresses. I was scared. I dragged that lifeless body as best as I could to the shore, trying not to drown myself. Only when I lifted her in my arms did I realize who she was. It was my sister, my twin, a part of me, dead. Impossible to comprehend. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do or to think. I have to stay calm. Martha is not dead. It's not possible. It's not true. There's no need to worry. Everything is fine. Everything will be fine. I have to stay calm. Martha is not dead. Martha, February 26th, 1923. Everything okay? Are you hurt? What are you doing? Go, Eric. Run. My parents ran towards me. My mother hugged me. She, who detested me, was now cuddling me. Her warmth filled me with life, and the pain became bearable. I felt protected. Martha, are you okay? She asked me, speaking slowly in order to let me read her lips. She thought I was deaf. She thought I was Martha. I didn't want the moment to fade, so I meekly nodded my head. I didn't realize I had done something that couldn't be undone. I would have to pretend to be Martha. Forever. O Lord who gives life to the dying, let your sacrifice of love be offered for Martha's soul. Into your hands I also entrust my spirit, so that I may be reunited with her in perpetual light, to never suffer the desolation of purgatory. Please grant her eternal rest, O Lord, and may eternal light shine upon her. Remember to light the candles in the hall. People will be here soon. Mummy always finds something for everyone to do. July seventeenth, nineteen forty four. Our family is deeply saddened and is thinking of you during this extremely difficult time. Ernesto E. and family. There's no reason to use the phone right now. I can't turn it off. We have to listen to the radio all of the time. Any news and announcements can be vital.
Books, books, and more books. In our villa, there must be ten times more than even here. Daddy's oboe. We were preparing a really nice duet together. On the rare occasions he's at home, that is. Daddy must be devastated. He loves me. I messed up and now I have to watch him suffer my death. I can at least light the candles and let him find some comfort in sleep. Never a moment's peace. Even at a time like this, she can't sit still for a second. Everything always has to be perfect with her. the door. Erich, Erich, wake up. Do you think it's appropriate to sleep here, of all places? What? Hmm? Yes. I must have fallen asleep. What are they talking about? You can't stay here forever. Why don't you go to bed? No, no. I want to stay with my daughter. Your daughter? Your daughter? You have another daughter, you know. The one who's still alive. Remember? What are you talking about, Irena? Julia is dead. What kind of comment is that? How can you? You should be thinking about Martha. Julia harmed Martha. You know that, right? And as if that were not enough, she has now also abandoned her. It's the same old story. Everything is always Julia's fault, isn't it? Her fault for Marta being deaf and for you being infertile. Do you think it's the right time for this? Julia is dead, Irena. Dead. Someone killed her. Do you realize that? Of course I realize. I get it. Do you think I'm stupid? No one understands it better than me. She always brought problems. Only problems. It would have been better if she hadn't been born at all. You're crazy. I'm the crazy one? Me? They have done this to get at me, yes. Your death is all my fault. All I could ever do for you was hurt you, Julia. My poor, sweet, crazy girl. What will I do without you? What will life be like now? All the time I didn't spend with you. But now I'm home. We can go fishing together. We can take pictures of butterflies. No. We can't do anything together anymore, can we? Nothing. 
I miss you, Julia. I miss you. While American bombings continue to devastate the peaceful towns within the Elsa Valley, we have heard some tragic news from the area of La Ramula. The young daughter of German Army General Erich K. was murdered near her home. What possible reason could there have been behind such a cowardly act? This is what the Carabinieri, who immediately intervened, hoped to find out. Mother didn't seem to suffer from the situation. All she cared about was that my death was so painful for Martha. But not having me around anymore must have been a great relief to her. At the end of the day, it was better for everyone that it was me who died. And it was better for me too that people thought that. But the guilt began to consume me. That's when I started having horrible nightmares.
It was just a dream. A horrible dream. That horrendous woman and the face of my sister. I wish all of this was a dream and my sister is just sleeping in her bed. Instead, her bed is empty and this is reality. This is Martha and me at the festival of the patron saint. It was only a few months ago, and now... Martha had asked for a picture of me to put in this frame. She wanted me to do one of those expressions of mine that made her laugh. Expressions that she couldn't quite imitate. She used to say that those were the signs of my soul. Can a photo capture the soul? Can I capture Martha's soul? Scary fairy tales. Everything seems to be scary lately. Yet everything here is so beautiful and bright. This is Martha's trinket box. It could contain something that will help to figure out what happened. Martha's clothes. To me, wearing them will be like having her with me. Mummy will also be happy to see them. Or I could wear my clothes in the other wardrobe. I always keep my trinket box locked. Oh gosh, if Mummy sees this picture, she'll throw it away for sure. It's me and Lapo. I want to see him as soon as possible so we can mourn Martha's death together. Nanny will be visiting me soon. Everything I need is always in my bag. The key to my trinket box. Here is my diary. July 12th, 1944. This is a new diary. We moved here today and I forgot my old one back at home. But that's okay. A new chapter in my life, a new diary. They say they brought us here for our own safety. Daddy, the war, and everything else. Nanny gave us her house and she went to look after the mansion. It's weird being back here after so many years. I remember Nanny telling me the fairy tale of the Lady of the Lake. It's one of the few happy memories I have from when I was little. Nanny isn't here and that's a shame, but Martha is here with me. I also get to see Lapo more often, which is wonderful. He's always hanging around here. Mum is thankfully too preoccupied with fixing up the house to worry about me. At least for now. July 16th, 1944. There's something creepy about the woods. Every time I'm at the lake, I get a strange feeling. Maybe it's the legend of the white lady playing tricks on me. I get weird ideas. I think that there is this presence. Then I think I'm just being crazy. Anyway, crazy or not, I want to take some pictures. I'm not scared. In fact, I'd say I'm excited. I've made arrangements with Martha. She's coming to the lake with me tomorrow to set up two new cameras with timers, and we'll see what we can photograph. Not before a good swim, of course. To be honest, Martha doesn't like photography all that much, and recently she's gone off swimming too. But she does like spending time with me by teasing me. Then, when she gets bored, she disappears into her books, and I do my own thing. We feel right when we're together. down for breakfast fine but i'm not sure we should let her sleep all day 
What do you think? This is not the right key. I what must get say? her key if I want to know what's inside her trinket box. Okay, okay, I won't wake her up. I'll, I'll just turn on her light. So when she wakes up, she'll know when to come down for breakfast. They really think I'm Martha and I can't hear them. I need to be careful not to talk or I will be in serious trouble. How wonderful the snow is. Unfortunately, it doesn't snow often around here. It's locked. Strange. Why did they lock my room? Martha's breakfast is ready. We can go. Yes, yes. It's getting late. Did you leave the newspaper for Martha? You know how much she likes reading it. Yes, Irena. It's on the table, can't you see? And that camera? Are you leaving it there? Yes, Irena. Can't you leave it there for a few more days? Do you mind? It was for Yulia. I will take it away soon. I, I promise. The sword makes me so sad. Seeing it there is as if... I don't know how to explain it. All right, all right, all right. But let's go now. We have too much to do. We can't stay here all day talking. Mummy is right, though. Martha always read everything. It's me who will now read the newspaper instead. They'll be out all day. The funeral preparations will take them a long time. Everything is more complex with the war. Over the next few days, I will see little to nothing of them. During deep winter, I would go to sleep snuggled by the fire and Nanny would get angry. Do you want to turn into a piece of charcoal, Julia? Brutal assassination in San Casciano. Julia Kay, a young woman from a respectable family, brutally murdered near her home. Carabinieri investigates. A possible political motive emerges. Martha was not killed by politics or war. She was killed by something much closer and much less clear. I will find out the truth. Firm bulwark even in the skies. 159 aircraft of the Germanic defense shot down in 24 hours. Major Russian operation northwest of Jassy. Enemy convoy lost in the Mediterranean. Two destroyers and six merchant vessels sunk. Brutal assassination in San Casciano. Julia Kay, a young woman from a respectable family, brutally murdered near her home. Carabinieri investigates. A possible political motive emerges. Julia Kay. Distressed but supported by faith. Irene E. the mother, Erich the father, and Martha the sister sadly announce Julia's passing. The funeral will take place in La Romola, Thursday, July 20th at 9.30pm, departing from the property of the deceased. First improvements in food registration. Bread rations increased by 50 grams per day as of April 20th. A kilo more every month of soup ingredients. Reforms to the treatment of agricultural workers and an unexpected distribution of jam. Chocolate, a privilege for few people in these times.
for Julia to take more and more photos. Dad. I can verify that the camera is still working by taking a photo. I could photograph a sparrow. There are so many. of them out here. These are our vineyards. My father loved them so much that he constantly took photos of them. There might be birds around the little wall in front of the house. I always put crumbs on it for them. Excellent. I've taken the picture, now it's straight to the darkroom in the cellar to print it. Daddy recently became a general in the German army. He used to take pictures on the front lines, but now he gives me the materials to take photographs instead. Now that Martha is gone, only this camera can fix my ideas and my memories. I can't allow myself to forget. I liked watching Nanny as she cooked. I always picked up loads of techniques. We are so lucky. In these difficult times, pantries are empty and people are going hungry. But with a German general for a father, food is never scarce. Lorenzini haberdashery. Five meters of grey cotton fabric. Six meters of white linen fabric. Four meters of green satin. Delivered on June 5th, 1944. In the event of an issue, contact us on the number 6987. And this red fabric? It's not been mentioned. Could this also be one of Mummy's, or could the nanny have left it here? These could be of use to me. Mummy's sewing machine. She learnt how to sew because nobody else could do it to her liking. Mummy's medicine. Will they do her any good? Ah. 
Daddy set up his darkroom here. He doesn't take photos anymore because of his work, but photography is still his true passion. I'm allowed to use the darkroom when I want to. I can't develop the photo like this. 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 Not a bad photograph. It seems that the camera works perfectly. Now I can take a self-timed photo for Martha's frame. There are three baths when developing photos. The development bath, then the first rinse, and then the fixing bath. The second rinse is done directly in the sink afterwards. Daddy had this device brought here last week. It's old, but still works. He has always loved everything technological. The camera is set up with the self-timer.
With the enlarger, I can print the images from the film onto paper. Yes, this is me. No one was ever able to tell us apart. But I never had the slightest doubt, and nor did Martha. It's strange how what identifies us most deeply is not visible to anyone. I was obsessively thinking about Martha and what had happened. But suddenly, a thought took control. The memory of that day at the lake was becoming more and more like a dream when, after awakening, the image becomes more and more faded. Could it be that the memories were a figment of the mind? Had I been the one that hurt my sister? I had always envied her, and now I had taken her identity. I experienced a suffocating pattern of thoughts. I decided to go straight to the lake to retrieve the film rolls. They would tell a different story, I was sure. But deep down, I kept hoping they would confirm my fading memory. Of course the door is locked. The keys aren't hanging on the lock as usual, then they will be in Daddy's study. We live in fear now. My parents are not going to let me go to the lake anymore after Martha's death, so this is the right time. I need to know. The self-doubt I feel is eating me up. July 18th. Everything has changed. I feel like a different person. The best part of me left with Martha. My enthusiasm, my desire to live, and the will to joke around. I find myself alone, left to my own devices. 
confused with no desire or expectations. I was handling the cameras at the lake and there was a floating body on the water. I don't remember what I was doing before. <sighs> Yet another memory lapse. That lifeless body was Martha's, my sister. Mummy ran up to me and hugged me thinking I was Martha and that I, Julia, was dead. I didn't correct her mistake and now it's too late. If they find out I have been fooling everyone, I don't even want to think about it. I feel terribly guilty pretending to be Martha, pretending to be deaf. I took the photo for Martha's frame. I know it's too late now and I felt incredible pain placing the picture. I said goodbye to her forever in that moment. I realized she was gone and there was no going back. I must do one thing for Martha. I must find out what happened. The partisans couldn't have killed her. That's just ridiculous. Lapo is my friend and he is one of them. He loved us so much. We know all of them, so it's just impossible. Here's the camera flash. Now I can photograph Martha even in the dark. Daddy's stuff. War maps. I've heard everything will play out on this new defensive line. I shouldn't risk it really, but I love watching them sleep. It's the only time they are together and not fighting. I don't have the courage to use the phone. Not right now. What the hell? For a moment I thought I saw... No, no, that's not possible. It must be this whole situation making me see things that don't exist.
be nice to have you always by my side, even if it's just a picture. A lens and a roll of infrared film. They can photograph what the naked eye cannot see. With this lens, I can shoot very close up. Blue filter, ideal for indoor photos. Orange filter, when there is fog, it improves the image by giving it some contrast. A photograph is both the present and the past, like a dead body. I don't know what I'm expecting. Maybe it's silly to think you can capture the soul of someone who has died. Her face can no longer tell me if what happened was my fault. I should have known that already. All I can do is head to the lake and get those rolls.
I came here to fish when I was little. I went with that ever so kind man who worked for my father. Who knows where he is now? Maybe he joined the war too. I love the night, but this night scares me. In the dark, I can feel all the harm I've caused. It's getting closer with each step. I feel it brushing up against me like a cold wind. I hurt Martha. The closer I get to the lake, the more certain I am of this. How could it not be? I killed her to steal the love that everyone felt for her but didn't feel for me. How could I have done such a thing? German soldiers. Daddy ordered patrols to be carried out near the house, but how could they have lost a helmet? God only knows.
Oh no! Damn, lamp! Luckily I still have my lighter with me. Cameras are somewhere around here. A shred of fabric here in the woods. How strange. Let's take a photo of Two cameras left. How could it have ended up here? It looks familiar. One more camera to collect. That's it. I've got them all. These films are going to help me understand what happened. Now I should rush home to develop them. Julia, Julia. Ha <laughs> ha 
have to wash up and do what needs to be done. If I'm sick, I have little time. The truth awaits me. It must be hidden within those rolls. What am I thinking? I would stain my clothes with blood. That's better. But I still don't understand all of that blood. That's never happened to me before. But I'm not going to tell my doctor, otherwise he'll make me stay in bed and rest. Even more scary fairy tales. It's very rude, but I could pick up the phone and listen to their conversation. How are you doing today, Rennie? I'm worried, Father. Very worried. We found more partisan tracks in the woods, right next to the house. That Lapo. I suspect he may be involved in the death of... No, please don't say that. It's, it's not possible. I know the boy, and I don't... Father, anything is possible in these dark times. Anything. That boy didn't even come to say goodbye to Julia. Didn't they love each other dearly? He must be terribly scared, and Julia always used to say that. Yeah, sure, she used to say they were just friends, but you know too, right? Friends are not supposed to do such things, Father. Or are they? But anyway, you're defending them both. You, my husband, and even the nanny who, deep down, is a good woman. The nanny? I believe the nanny is the one who hurt Julia. With her evil passion for those cards, they are cursed things. I hope you made them disappear. Of course. I keep them safe in my room. Anyway, you must forgive me, Father. I have to go. They've come to pick me up. Have a good day. You too. Lapo's involved in Martha's death. My mother is losing her mind again. How could anyone even imagine such nonsense? And Don Attilio, he is a great friend, but what a weird view. Those cards are just a game, but most importantly, they're mine. Why on earth did they take them from me? New ordinance for the safety of citizens. From this moment on, it is forbidden for anyone to leave their homes. Romola, 15th of July, 1944. Dear Mrs. Irene, I'm writing to let you know that all is well here at the villa. Thank you for being so considerate and caring. I apologize for the simplicity of the housing you were forced to live in. I also locked the room where the little one used to stay as requested. I've left you the key. It is the one with the pink key ring. Try to stay safe. Best regards, Nanny. Why on earth did Mummy have that door locked? It was my room. What is she trying to hide? Dear Mother, this is hard, but I have something to tell you. I found out that Julia is pregnant. Go to the lake tomorrow morning at seven and watch her as she bathes. You'll see that her tummy is growing. Martha, what? I'm not pregnant. Why is everything becoming even more confusing? I'm searching for an explanation, but instead I'm left with more questions.
Here are my cards. Nanny and I always used to play with them. She would predict my future and I pretended to predict hers. The future was always good for everyone. Maybe when she read them, she saw my true future, which she hid from me. Or more likely, these cards are actually just a stupid game to reassure and deceive oneself with. But deceiving oneself is sometimes necessary. How can we live happily otherwise? Pervitin again. I feel like these pills do nothing other than agitate her. The end of a relationship. It's very clear, but my plans will be successful. I only need to know what these plans are. This is Mummy's jewellery. She wears them every day. Even though Daddy says it's impractical and dangerous to show signs of wealth these days. As usual, she doesn't want to listen to reason and ends up arguing with Daddy until he goes to play war, as she says. General Edith K. New rules on curfew and women's behaviour. German command of S. Vicenzo Atori. Telephone number 1185. Twenty five ISO film. When the sun is high in the sky, it's perfect. The superior commander of the German Federal Armed Forces announces 1. Whoever is in possession of weapons or explosives not reported to the German headquarters will be shot. 2. Whoever harbours bandits and or protects them and provides them with clothing and or weapons will be shot. 3. Whoever is aware of the existence of any rebel groups or even lone rebels without reporting them will be shot. Italian workers in Germany. The following rules are in place for workers who voluntarily work in Germany. A commitment of a maximum period of one year before returning to Italy. War rages on the Eastern Front. An attack launched by the Soviets after hours of cannonade. The fight on this front has been going on for a long time. Fighting in Normandy. Victorious Germanic counterattack on the road from Perriers to Carentan. Pon Heber reconquered north of Saint Lo. Many US losses caused by the flying bomb action. With this lens, everything gets bigger. Red filter for super high contrast photos. This lens increases the framed area. It allows me to fit more into the image. I have to be careful and keep the volume down as I listen. I must go unnoticed. 
I am meant to be deaf after all. Ready? Julia? You ready? Sure, Daddy. I'm good to start. I have already started recording. Oh, no, my voice will sound awful. No way, come on. Didn't you want to study singing anyway? No, 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 I was young and stupid when I said that. Okay, ready. Go. Oh, how nice. It's the rehearsal for last week's concert. I never heard the recording. But I was right, my voice is awful. Cannot be called singing. Anyway, it's time I develop these film roles. I can't wait any longer. I wish I could just stop time. These images could change everything. I cannot bear the fact that I may have hurt Martha. I would rather die. Damn my head and these memory lapses. It's such a pain not remembering. It's like getting lost inside yourself. I'm carrying Martha to shore. I'm trying to save her. My memories, although fuzzy, do match reality. I feel a little better. Now I can find out who really hurt Martha. Maybe I should meet with the white lady. She might be able to tell me something. Is this crazy talk? Yes, definitely. But what's normal about any of this? Maybe you have to be a little crazy to get anything done. Here I was running toward the pier, just as I remember.
A tripod is necessary to take photos with long exposures. I have found what I need to take in for red photos. This is the centre of our farm, but since we moved here, it hasn't worked like it used to. Security matters, Daddy says. just doing? It's dangerous, I know, but I want to follow them and see what's happening. Verdammt! Dear friend, what have they done to you? Your handkerchief was the symbol of what you believed in. At least that is left of you. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you and don't think you're dead? Everyone calls you Martha now, right? I know you too well. I can never understand why no one else can ever tell you apart. Not even your own mother and father. Martha is gone and I cannot reconcile myself. <laughs> Ein Mädchen erschossen, du Idiot! Scheiße, scheiße, scheiße! Was machen wir jetzt? Sieh mal, was sie um ihren Hals hat. Sie ist eine von ihnen. Es musste getan werden. Sie ist die Tochter von General Erich K., du verdammter Trottel! Sie war die Freundin von diesem armen Kerl. Oh, verdammt, jetzt sind wir wirklich am Arsch! Scheiße, lass uns abhauen! Aber, aber sie lebt noch! Sie liegt im Sterben. 
Siehst du, wo du sie getroffen hast? Sie ist bestimmt schon tot. Wir müssen jetzt abhauen, sonst sind wir auch bald tot. I'm dying, I thought, but strangely enough, I wasn't afraid. In fact, I was almost relieved. When I returned, I found myself once again in the midst of a bad dream. One whose meaning I did not understand at the time. I give you back your appearance. 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 Two sisters were destined to die. Julia, the first sister, and Martha, the second. On Julia's day of departing, identical twins stood before me, impossible to tell apart. They questioned my presence, since they were still so young. Julia must come with me, I demanded. But they both claimed to be Martha. I explained that Martha's fate was soon to be the same, and their games were useless. I didn't have time for it. The war was keeping me busy. But they didn't concede, 
and instead kept insisting. Can we follow you together? No, impossible. Are you sure Martha will die too? Nothing is certain in wartime. What if the wrong person went with you? Then you would have cheated death. One would die unjustly, and the other would simply be delaying her fate. They discussed amongst themselves, then hugged before one of them came forward. She stared in a determined, almost threatening manner. I guessed it was Martha sacrificing herself, giving more time to her sister. But I stayed silent, not to reveal their failed deception. No one lies to the face of their own death. So I asked how their choice was reached. We do lots by throwing a medallion, she said quietly. They had trusted in fate. Oh, how naive they were. They knew fate plays by its own rules, which is true, but it is also my ally. Fate never would have allowed the wrong girl to follow me. In that case, my work was done. She must have been Julia. However, little to my knowledge at the time, that blasted medallion had the same name engraved on both sides. Martha's. So, my first assumption was correct. They were too damn smart, and had fooled both fate and me. One thing is for sure. I'll put things back where they belong. I will correct my ignorance and give fate back its blindfold. It's so bad. I can hardly breathe. I would like to spend a moment with my sister, just me and her alone, before people arrive for the funeral and then take her away. No, 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 my bag is not here. My diary. Lapo's letter. How is she? How is my daughter? Please, doctor. Please give me good news. It's a miracle she's alive, Eric. But she will be all right. The bullet passed right by her heart and exited her chest. Unbelievably, it missed her lungs, spine, and heart. She could have been paralyzed or died. But thankfully, she's fine. I examined her thoroughly. She didn't even lose that much blood. She was lucky. And you were lucky, so to speak. She was lucky that my wife went for a walk in the woods. Otherwise, 
Otherwise, she would have bled to death. Yes. I don't know what to say. All of this. It's too much. So much death and suffering. Nothing more. Don't worry, Erik. She's young, so she'll recover quickly. I'll be here all day anyway. Thank you, Doctor, for everything. Do you mind coming with me to pick my wife up from the cemetery? The funeral will start soon in the chapel. Of course not. Lead the way. You know, with all of these preparations for the funeral, Irina wants everything to be perfect. It's her way of coping, so she doesn't have to think about everything going on. She is a woman who has suffered so much. Maybe too much. Violence against citizens continues in La Romola, and once again, General K's family has come under fire. Now we turn our General Edict K, new rules on curfew and women's behaviour. German command of S. Vincenzo Atori, telephone number one one eight five. Women's movement appears to be the only reason behind the cowardly act. The New Zealand troops are advancing slowly. After the Battle of Porgy Ponzi. On the 18th, they are still far from the Tavernelli Val di Pisa. The German resistance on the Tuscan hills has been exhausting. What if the bag is here somewhere? There's my bag. Thank God. Let's hope Lapo's letter is in there. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you and don't think you're dead? Everyone calls you Martha now, right? I know you too well. I can never understand why no one else can ever tell you apart. Not even your own mother and father. Martha is gone, and I cannot reconcile myself to that fact. I have to stay hidden, and sadly I can't run to you. Even if I would love nothing more than to hold you tight and cry together. No words. I just want to be close to you. Can we meet in the barn tonight? I will try my best to be there around midnight. Don't be alarmed, but if things get ugly, please remember this number, 6934. He knew he was in serious danger, but what about the letter? I had it in my hand when the soldiers ran off. Mummy found me, and if she's read it, well, she hates Lapo, and now she must know who I am. No, no, she probably would have left me there to die. She'd rather have no daughter than the wrong one. Before I passed out, I must have put it back in my bag. There is no other explanation. darkness that brings uncertainty, but there will be a guide, something that can teach me something. July 19th. 
I retrieved the cameras at the lake, but I had convinced myself that I was the one who had hurt Martha. So much so that when I had the rolls with me on the way home, I found myself in another horrible dream. I don't even remember going to sleep. As soon as I woke up, I developed the film. The photos confirmed to me that my memory of that night was correct. It was a great relief. I have decided to go back to the lake in an attempt to communicate with the white lady. I know it's a crazy thought, but I can't get it out of my head. I need to know what happened to Martha, so I must pursue every possible avenue, even the path of insanity. I should pick up the phone but remain silent. If I let the caller speak first, I'll find out who it is. Attempted murder in Laura Mola. After the murder of Julia Kay, today her twin sister is the victim of another attempted murder. The condition of the young girl, found by the German troops, is no cause for concern. The political motive behind this is becoming all the more clear. But that's not what happened. It's all wrong. Mummy was the one who found me. The German soldiers shot me. Best to stay quiet. No one ever believes the truth. New ordinance ban on the use of bicycles. Over the last few days, cyclists have once again shot at members of the Italian armed forces and at civilians in the streets. The offenders will be punished in accordance with German martial law. Attempted murder in La Romola. After the murder of Julia Kay, today her twin sister is the victim of another attempted murder. The condition of the young girl, found by the German troops, is no cause for concern. The political motive behind this is becoming all the more clear. The Battle of Tuscany. German operations in the Livorno area. Extremely violent fighting in the streets of the city. One of Daddy's many photos. Who knows who these other people are? It's the nanny. I can confide in her. Nanny? Hello, it's me. What? Hello? Oh my lord, I must be dreaming or something. No, nanny, you're not dreaming. It's really me, it's Julia. Oh my god, Julia, my little sparrow. How wonderful. Sorry, but I thought you were dead. I, I saw you lying there dead. This brings me so much joy that... Actually, you must explain to me, my little sparrow, what is happening? I told Nanny everything that had happened. She was sad for Martha, of course, but very happy at the same time. I was the one she had a special bond with. I explained to her that I wanted to try and meet the White Lady even if I knew it was a silly idea. But she didn't think I was a fool. Quite the opposite. She explained to me what I should do in an attempt to meet her. It was complicated. I noted everything down carefully in my diary. Who knows, maybe she did it only to keep me occupied, while deciding what to do with me and who to warn. I won't ever know, though, because that very same day, a bomb struck the villa and she died. They all died. We should have been in that house ourselves, but instead... Poor Nanny. Bye, Nanny. I love you. Goodbye. 
goodbye, my darling. I thought I'd lost you. Be careful, my little sparrow. Now I know what must be done to meet the lady. Nanny has explained everything to me. I must try to meet her early in the morning when it is foggy, or all will have been in vain. That's what the legend says. This is what I need to do. 1. I must reinvoke her loss by putting her into contact with her lover. To do this, Nanny said to look for his grave in the woods, but there are so many. Daddy always said that infrared photos can see what the naked eye cannot. Maybe then they also see ghosts. There wouldn't be anything strange about that now, considering I'm trying to contact one after all. How crazy. 2. A part of me needs to enter her world. A lock of hair would work, so I'll need scissors to cut some off. 3. I will need an object that connects her world to mine. I don't know what to do for this yet. Hopefully something will come to mind when I least expect it. 4. To communicate with her, I will need to use my tarot cards. I will meet with the lady on the island where her lover was executed. My bike. The wheel is deflated as usual. A bicycle pump will solve this. Martha was taken to the chapel for her funeral. I want to say goodbye to her alone before everyone arrives. Here's the bicycle pump. Probably the wrong number. You've called this number. Damn. Lapo must be dead then. Rest in peace, fair comrade. Yes, Lapo is dead. I am due- No, no, don't talk. We don't need to know who you are. By calling this number, it means Lapo wanted you to complete his work. A telephone cable near the house of German General Erich K has to be cut. One goes to the house, but there's another cable we suspect is connected to a secret base. That is the one that has to be cut. If you see any German vehicles around, let us know immediately. We won't use this number anymore. It's dangerous. Use a telegraph. That will be safer. I hope you know how to use them, otherwise you'll have to come up with something. This is important. Frequency X. Before the message, telegraph, town on fire, to identify yourself. Long live the homeland. Long live the liberation.
operation. Should I sabotage the cable and become a spy? I don't know. My father is German. It would be like betraying him even though he himself hates this war. But what happened to Lapo and those guys? If I can save someone's life, maybe I should try. Or maybe I can talk to Daddy about it. He may be able to advise me on what to do. I don't even know the first thing about all this. What were you thinking, Lapo? To cut the cable, I will need sharp scissors. Tailor scissors should be fine. According to Nanny, this was an old windmill. It has been abandoned for as long as I can remember, and it has always given me the creeps.
poor little one. He's dead, poor little guy. His place is by Martha's side. Nanny always calls me Little Sparrow. This is the part of me that died with Martha. It'll be safe next to her. Here, Martha, this is my heart. Carry it with you. I'm starting to understand how painful your condition must have been. Not being able to properly communicate with anyone is becoming increasingly difficult. I envied you, but I did not see your suffering. I did not understand your courage. I miss you so much, Martha. I'm not worthy to dress in your clothes. Holy water. It's only water and yet there's something special about it. There's only a few signatures from my funeral. If people had known that it was actually Martha, there would have been far more. I'm sorry that I took this from you too. Commune of San Casciano, Province of Florence, Death Certificate. From the Register of Death Certificates of this Commune, Number 174, Part 3, Series 12 of the year 1944. It is certified that on the day of the 16th of July of the year 1944, Julia Kay has died, resident of Via Perciabaya, born in La Romola. On the 26th of February 1923, the daughter of General Erich K. and Irene K., Don Attilio D. will give the funeral and the esteemed Mr. Alberto M., who will look after the burial in the cemetery of La Romola, telephone number 6537, the official state civil service, General Galeazzo T. That raven is making a big fuss. from the same fabric I found a shred of next to the lake. In fact, it is torn. It must be my mother's. My goodness. I started to suspect that Mummy could have been involved in Martha's murder. Lost in these thoughts, hours passed, and I completely forgot about the funeral. When I realized it was evening, they were already carrying the coffin towards the cemetery. She never loved me, I knew that well, but I would never have believed that. Had it been her, I struggled to believe it, but it made so much sense. At the lake, she must have thought Martha was me because she was convinced that I was dead.
When the funeral ended, I felt an irresistible urge to play. I loved music. I started playing without thinking about the possible consequences. I didn't care anymore. I needed to feel alive to exist again. on here? Julia? Is that you? No, it's not possible. Martha's never played. She's deaf, yet... No. This is madness. My God. So, Martha? I understand now. You can get all of the attention, right? You were jealous, weren't you? Because she was a wonderful girl and, and you're just a useless little slut. How did you manage to convince her? I get it now. But she... she talked to me. I... I... no. It doesn't make sense. I will have you locked up in an asylum. You hear? That's enough! You will pay for what you've done, you cursed lunatic! They will torture you to reveal the monsters in your head. Her words were as sharp as blades. I tried to tell her that it wasn't me. I showed her the photos I developed that proved my innocence. But she grew all the more angry, calling me crazy, and then... She began to hit me with everything she had at hand. I closed my eyes as more darkness began to take over in me. Memories came flooding back. Not memories of actual past events, but more so of feelings, feelings I had when I was little. They were scary, they were the fears of a little girl. Despite what had happened, I went walking in the woods early the next morning to meet the lady. The evening before, my father had tried desperately to console me. Talk to me, Julia. You know I love you. I just want to understand what happened. I am happy you are alive. Even if we have lost Martha, your mother was just in shock. She didn't want to hurt you. I don't know what I'm hoping to find, but what else can I do? I will hopefully see if one of these graves is hiding something. I hope that the infrared film will show me.
will succeed in the end. I'm going to enjoy what I deserve. But uncertainty and resistance to change are making my life very difficult. Without all the necessary elements, there's no point travelling to the island. Without all the necessary elements, there's no point tra travelling to the island.
the yellow filter. If it were to snow, it would be perfect. The green filter, useful for landscapes. There's the grave I've been searching for, and the spirit of a prisoner. Just like the white lady, he's trapped in this world, but they can no longer meet one another. Evil is separating them. What is this, a joke? Maybe someone wrote on the film? Also, what does that even mean? Light, like divine light? Something to do with religion, maybe?
The chairman tanned its location via the telegraph hidden near the cowshed. Daddy probably asked for a garrison after all that has happened. I should report its location via telegraph. This wire heads towards the house and then keeps going, so it must be the right one. Now all that remains is to go to the telegraph near the barns. Telegraph must be hidden in one of these feed bins. I have to start every message with the code word. I saw the tank on the road, and the road is near the house. I guess I have to communicate something like that. I'll add over at the end to make it clear that I have finished.
No, no, this doesn't seem clear to me. I need to find the right words. Damn it. I got the length of the sound wrong. I'll try this word again from the beginning. Damn it again. I need to be more careful about the length of the sound. No, something's wrong. Better try again.
They are asking me to find a map of the defensive line. There is one in my father's study. The fence has been destroyed. Nazi fascists at the stake. What? Who could have done this? What did these poor creatures have to do with anything? I was afraid of animals when I was little. I never approached them alone. If I wear this, it should allow me to make contact with her. With this object, she'll have to hear me, I have no doubt. I'm missing the element that connects my world to that of the White Lady. Oh, the lake! Of course. Why didn't I think of it sooner? The dress that I threw in the bushes that cursed day. It's been sitting beside the lake for a few days now, in a world that is both mine and hers. Without all the necessary elements, there's no point travelling to the island.
Here it is. I hope it works. Now that I have everything I need to communicate with the lady, I can finally go to the island. This little boat is Nanny's husband, Pride and Joy. He used to take me fishing in it many years ago. I don't understand why Mother never wanted me and Martha to use it. A roll of film. It's the one that I was taking out of the camera just before I discovered Martha's body. It should contain shots from before that moment. With a bit of luck, one of the shots has captured the moment of Martha's murder. I will then finally have an answer. Was it really Mummy? I will develop it as soon as I can, but now it's time to speak with the White Lady. I will wear her lover's cross to draw her to me. A lock of my hair to enter into her world. I will use the tarot cards to communicate with her. The first ten will be used like I did with Nanny. Once two cards have been chosen, it should begin. You camouflage yourself in the woods to approach me. You blend in with the water to make yourself known. You wish to communicate with me through the energy of symbols. You use my pain to summon me. You are very bold. 
You call upon me for knowledge that I do not possess, for answers I do not have. I am only a vessel, like water, like air, a vessel to move and breathe. It worked. Now I need to choose two cards. Here we go. You will no longer be able to tell light from darkness. In sorrow, the difference is so subtle. You are alone, and you will remain alone. Memories are abandoning you. They are your only true companions. Now they take the place of your happy childhood and they may return to keep you company. The daughter, the house, the mother. The daughter comes from the mother's house, then makes herself a home and becomes a mother. This cycle is broken. To undo the knot, find the son. He is the original sin reflected on you. The one who gave you the light wishes to take it back. She wants control. Bit by bit, she is crumbling your life. You have to stop her. Part of our soul embraces the people we love. It is then torn away from us when these people disappear. The wound is deep and it cannot heal. Faith vacillates. Death causes fear. But the church is a safe place. It is home and mother to its children. Faith is the light. Do not lose it. Finding it again is almost impossible. I lost it in sorrow, and without time I am lost in the dark. You do not have control of yourself. There is a dark figure inside you. The wounds are feeding it. It will do things you do not like. It will use your desires, your guilt, the darkest parts of your conscience. I can sense that you want to know who did it, but I do not have the answer. You must find it yourself. Do not ever try to enter through the front door if you wish to reach the heart. Your twin sister might have the answer you are looking for. Even after death, we leave traces of ourselves don't we? Everything is indefinite if you look at the essence of things.
Speaking with the white lady confused me even more, but at least now I have this key. July 16th. Dear sister, I entrust my secrets to this letter. If you are reading it, things have gone as I thought they might, and I am no longer there with you. First of all, I am not deaf, and I never was. Mother scared me when we were little, so I decided not to speak or listen anymore. It worked. In fact, Mother began to love me. They also found a scientific explanation for my deafness. Neurological damage caused by excessive pressure exerted by the twin during pregnancy progressively led to hearing loss. And like that, my decision was also transformed into a fault of yours. So I must put it right. Do I have any other secrets? Unfortunately, yes, but a letter is too cold for such matters. Now that you know that I can speak, please go to the darkroom. I have a hidden recording. Listen to it and you will hear my voice. Farewell, Martha. Why all of this madness, Martha? What else have you been hiding from me? You deprived me of your voice for more than fifteen years. I can't wait to hear it now. Hi, Julia. I know that this will seem absurd, but this is me and this is my voice. We are equals in this sense, too. Well, it's obvious, really. I've basically always spoken and you were my voice. I'm going to meet my fate, so I don't want there to be any more secrets between us. I have to tell you that I'm... I'm pregnant, Julia. I'm pregnant with Lapo's baby. We had sex, and I never had the courage to tell you. I was so afraid of hurting you. I'm so ashamed. And now? How can I ever bring this child into the world? The baby is starting to show. Could you tell? That's why I'm no longer getting undressed in front of you. But for how much longer can I hide it? Yesterday, you asked me to go to the lake together early in the morning. You, the sleepyhead, early. I asked you to switch beds with me, like we used to when we were little girls. I got up at dawn and didn't wake you. I put on one of your dresses. I wrote a card to mother telling her that it was you who was pregnant, not me, and to come and see at the lake. I left it on the desk in her room. Then I felt the need to talk to you and I remembered the recorder in the dark room.
go to the lake alone and act as you. I will tell her everything you never had the courage to tell her. I will be your voice. I know how much she's made you suffer over the years. Unlike you, I remember all of the harm she has done to you, and it is my fault. Take my place, sister. You will live a better life, and I will be able to rest in peace, knowing that I at least try to put right what I have done wrong. I will go now. My last memory will be the image of you sleeping peacefully. Hi, Julia. I was upset, unbelievably upset. July 16th, that cursed day. Martha didn't wake me up. It was late. Martha hadn't woken me up as we had agreed. And I always overslept. Martha wasn't there and we were supposed to go to the lake together. She even made her bed, which was unusual. I thought Mother woke up early, despite her medication, and asked her to do something. There was a dress missing from my wardrobe. I simply decided to go out and take the photographs by myself without Martha. It was a foggy morning, but it was no longer dawn. It was a sign of something terrible. My mother had killed her beloved Martha with her own hands. I had then taken her place, usurping the throne of her affection. She would have never forgiven me. I had real reason to be afraid.
I searched for one of Daddy's pistols to defend myself. What a stupid little girl I was. In spite of everything, that roll of film still needed developing. Even if it didn't prove she was guilty, I also wanted to search for proof of Martha's pregnancy. Almost five German divisions face the troops of the 8th Army. Units of an Indian division cross the river Pesa. Telegram. I'll leave it in the letterbox. Have a good day. Another telegram of condolence. Isn't it a bit late? The New Zealanders conquer Tavernelli in the eastern sector of the battlefront. The troops of the 2nd New Zealand Division, British 8th Corps, conquer Tavernelli. The 6th South African Armoured Division advances on the heights near Greve, conquering the peaks of the Domini and Philly Mountains. The 4th Division reaches San Giovanni. Bombings. Damage caused by the bombings between Florence and Siena continues to increase. After the disaster at Poggibonsi, rubble and power cuts are the order of the day. Attack on Hitler. The New Zealanders conquer Tavernelli in the eastern sector of the battlefront. The troops of the 2nd New Zealand Division, British 8th Corps, conquer Tavernelli. The 6th South African Armoured Division advances on the heights near Greve, conquering the peaks of the Domini and Philly Mountains. The 4th Division reaches San Giovanni. Sabotage of the phone lines in La Romola. Telephone cables have been cut, causing danger to general safety. Any damage to the information service facilities is punishable by death. Dear Mrs. Irene K, following your call, we have received a telegram from Dr. D. Your request has been accepted. As soon as the police station issues authorization, we will send for the girl. While we wait, to avoid the girl taking any extreme actions, as per the fears you have expressed, we ask that you trust in the advice of her treating physician. I thank you for your generous and charitable donation to our institution. Director S. Volterra Psychiatric Hospital, telephone 0782. Now that she has discovered everything, she wants to lock me up in an asylum. Maybe. be even worse. She wants to kill me and have everyone believe it was suicide. She is preparing all the finer details. Commune of San Casciano, province of Florence, death certificate. From the register of death certificates of this commune, number 174, part three, series 12 of the year 1944. It is certified that on the day of the 16th of July of the year 1944, Julia Kay has died. Resident of Via Perciabaya, born in La Romola. On the 26th of February 1923, the daughter of General Erich Kay and Irene Kay, Don Attilio D will give the funeral and the esteemed Mr. Alberto M, who will look after the burial in the cemetery of La Romola. Telephone number 6537. The official state civil service. General Galeazzo T.
Hello, it's at NAK. Yeah? Yeah, and wh what do you want from me? I'm sorry to disturb you. I just wanted to know if I can come over to see you later today or tomorrow. Of course not. Do not come looking for me anymore. Stop bothering me, you bitch. He must be going crazy. I don't believe for one second that Mummy would let him treat her this way. Sheer madness. Twenty first of July. Lapo is dead. They shot me in the back when I discovered his body. I thought I had hit rock bottom. These are soulless, empty days. After so many awful events, I finally managed to meet the White Lady, or so I believe. The line between reality and dreams is becoming less and less clear to me. I thought a lot about her words, but they didn't shed any light on my assumptions. They kept ringing in my mind. Maybe I will understand when the time comes. Now I know for certain that it was Mummy who killed Martha, when she thought that she was me. Only a week ago, all of this would have seemed impossible. I just need to find the proof, so she can pay for what she has done. I mustn't care about what people think. Or fear will prevent me from facing the music. It will be very difficult to recover from the mental collapse. Destiny is inevitable. The end waits for us. Maria speaking. How may I help? Hello, Maria. It's Irene K. What is this? Some sort of bad joke? I know Irene very well, and you are definitely not Irene. What am I going to ask at the town hall? Ramala doctor's surgery? How may I help? Hello, it's Julia Kay. Please wait a moment. Doctor, it's that strange. 
strange girl, Irene's daughter. Hi, Julia. Yes, it's me, Doctor. It's Julia. Excuse me for- Don't worry, Julia. You needn't be ashamed. How are you? Any chest pain? I'm okay, Doctor. The pain is almost gone. But Mother seems to be getting ill again. I mean, in the head, basically. I saw that she is taking that medicine again. Pervitin, I think. Irene is very shaken by everything that's happening. But I don't think there is any need to worry. I saw her recently and she's doing well, all things considered. Pervitin was made illegal in Italy a few years ago now, so I wouldn't have prescribed it to her. But they say that it is still used in the army. Maybe they could give you some information at the German command. I must go now, Julia. I will come to see you soon. I don't have the German command's number, but I'm sure it won't be hard to find among... father's things. Perhaps in his study? Can you help me, Father? It's Julia Kay. You know what's happened, right? I know everything, Julia. Now calm down. You can talk to me whenever you want. Come see me at the church in town. Headquarters for the officers of San Casciano. How can I help? Hi, I was hoping to hear whether there has been any development on the investigation into the murder of Julia Kay. Wait a moment, please. Who's calling? I am Julia Kay's sister. Oh, sure. You can speak and I can fly. Do you really think it's appropriate to joke with the Cabanari? Volterra Psychiatric Hospital, how may I help you? Hello, we recently requested the admission of Julia Kay to the hospital. I just wanted to know whether it would be possible to cancel the request. I'm sorry, but the request was issued by the municipality where you reside, madam. Any revocation of the request should be passed by them. Only they can decide whether to approve of the cancellation or not. Have you already received the telegram confirming that we have taken charge of the request? Yes, I just received the telegram. Okay, so the admission will continue at this time. You can get back in touch with our institution later for more information. Please bear in mind that everything will depend on the designated doctor's assessment. Please come here in person around one month after the admission. Thank you. Goodbye, madam.
not now. Go to the dark room now. Not when she's around. I must stay as far away from her as possible. I could go to the cemetery instead to find out whether Martha really was pregnant or not. There are more and more weapons around, and everyone is scared after what happened. General Edic K. New rules on curfew and women's behavior. German command of S. Vicenzo Atori. Telephone number 1185. San Vincenzo Atori, identify yourself. I am the daughter of General Edic K. I am looking for information on Pervitin. We cannot give you any kind of information here. I found the drugs in my house, so I took a few pills thinking that they were for headaches. But now I don't feel well. I need help. I'm not sure whether I should go to the doctor, should I? Uh, please wait a moment, miss. Uh, Captain, I've got a woman on the line who says she has taken pervitin and doesn't feel well. Hello? How many pills did you take? 
I took two pills, I think. Or maybe three? Any unwanted effects will go away quickly, miss. Just try and stay calm. Martha is in the family crypt. That place is scary. I don't remember, but Nanny told me we used to go there when we were kids, to see who was brave enough to go down the stairs. No one would ever go further than the first two steps. Now Martha's down there, alone, in the dark. She must be frightened. Crypt is here. Not now. Let's hope the caretaker isn't around. That man gives me the creeps. I should water the plants. No one will do it. The caretaker clearly doesn't care. This door is locked, but I must get in. Maybe I can find something around here to break the lock. The family crypt is locked. The key must be in the caretaker's hut, as always.
Now that I have filled the watering can, I can water the plants. Lapo, if you were in front of me, what would I say to you? That I'm angry because you were sleeping with Martha? No, I'm not angry. I'm sorry that you kept everything hidden from me. It stings a little, perhaps, but faced with your loss, everything is now meaningless. I'm happy that they buried you here. We'll be neighbours. I knew that Daddy would allow it even if you were fighting with the partisans. For him, this war is a stranger as it is for me. Goodbye, Lapo. We will meet again soon. It's time to look for Martha. These are perfect for breaking the lock. I should hurry before the caretaker comes back. Everyone takes a side. I find myself siding with my family, but I'm not sure whether it is right. Instructions for the automatic telephone machine. For example, if you wish to call the number 0573, pick up the telephone from the hook and bring the receiver to your ear. You will hear a continuous tone. Firstly, place your index finger in the hole displaying the number zero. Turn the disc clockwise until it stops. Let the disc return freely to its resting position. Repeat the same steps for the numbers 5, 7, 3. Enough. I can't go on like this any longer. I can't go on pretending nothing happened. My family was slaughtered by these dirty Nazis. My daughter wasn't even buried and I had to bury that half-blood instead. An Italian family that got cosy with the dirty Germans. Bastards, that's what they are. What am I supposed to do with my life now? I want to end it, but not without taking a few Germans down with me. You won't see me anymore, but you will hear about me. Long live the resistance. Viva Italia. I can see why we were scared as children. It's a rather gloomy place.
May God forgive me for what I'm about to do. I also pray that you, Martha, will forgive me. Martha was pregnant, pregnant with a deformed fetus with two heads. Twins again. They always said that it ran in the family. I was all the more shocked. I was doing things that I had never done before. I do not know what force was moving me. I became unstoppable. I decided to photograph the horror as evidence to show my mother and to everyone. Who knows why? Enough now. I will torture you no longer. I will come back to fix you, and I will stay and take care of you. We will spend so much time together. I love you, Martha. Doctor, I must thank you for your help. I wouldn't know what to do without you. Even our own dear Don Atilio seems to not understand the situation. Irena, please, consider the idea of leaving Italy as your husband suggested. It would be better for everyone, especially for the girl. I fear that nothing will make her better. Her father doesn't want to accept it. I believe that hope is long gone. I agree, but in Germany there are better treatments in specialized clinics. The asylum is a temporary solution, just to ensure that she doesn't do anything foolish. But it's a nightmarish place. You know that all too well. You cannot possibly want this for your daughter. Of course I don't. But what can I do? She is a danger to herself, to us, to everyone. One of Eric's guns has also disappeared. She must have taken it. Who else could it have been? I am so scared, Doctor. I cannot wait any longer. Also, you know what they think of Italians in Germany, don't you? But you would be with Eric, an esteemed general. Everyone will respect you. That cursed girl. Where could she be? Let's hope she doesn't play any more foolish stunts. I'll wait for her here. In the cellar. Sooner or later, she'll go to the dark room. That's for sure. I would gladly stay and keep an eye on her. But I must rush to town to organize the last few things for her hospitalization. Thank you, Doctor. Don't worry. We'll see you later. She's sleeping. I must take advantage of this. I will make her talk. She will reveal the truth out of fear. She thinks I can be silenced by calling me crazy. But unbeknownst to her, I will record everything. Everyone will know what you have done to your own daughter. I would make too much noise and wake her up. I would make too much noise and wake her up. Mm -hmm. 
I would make too much I would make too much noise and wake her up. A roll of film. It's the one that I was taking out of the camera just before I discovered Martha's body. It should contain shots from before that moment. Now I will wake her up and she will confess. You can bet on it. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. <laughs> Dear God, what have I done? She forced me. She killed Martha. But who in the world will believe me now? They will take me to the mental asylum. Those rolls of film are my only hope. So that's who had the keys to my childhood bedroom. I could have guessed. <laughs> my God, sooner or later more bombs will land here. Then everything will come to an end. At least now I finally have the keys to my old room. But why was it locked in the first place? Finally, I can enter my room. The puppet theatre. I loved it when I was a child. It's like being a child all over again. I used to play with the puppets by reenacting what was happening in my life. To clear my mind. I want to do it again. At the beginning of any puppet act, there was always the legend of the White Lady. Otherwise, the scenes I was reenacting were worthless. According to an ancient legend, the lakes of the area are haunted by the spirit of a young woman who was killed by the man she loved. A lover's nightly tryst by the lake. So much hope and desire, but death, not love, was awaiting her. My love is not here yet. I'll wait. Ah, what a beautiful moon tonight. You're here at last. What's going on? Why are you acting weird? I know you kissed another. I would never do that. I love you. I love you too much. The thought of you with another drives me insane. That's why you have to die. What did I do to you?
In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, takes the life of a young woman whenever a
sure great idea. Yes, it happened like this. Then in the morning, Martha went to the lake pretending to be me to show her pregnancy. She knew Mother was going to follow her down. Now I can only guess what happened when they met at the lake. Take off your clothes. I want to see your shame. No way! What are you going to do with that knife? I'm going to kill you. It didn't happen this way. Martha is dead, Mother isn't. So you are pregnant. Your sister was right. Well, at least I had fun. I'll punish you for this, whore. Try. I dare you! Dum! 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 This might be exactly what happened. I will never know exactly what happened, but I think I have an idea. And after everything, I shot my mother. No, 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 I didn't shoot. What actually happened? It is all in my mind, but I can remember. I know I can. A little arm. A small leg. And another little arm. Another small leg. Oh, look, only the head is left.
I was under the bridge, but, but it was just a game. This, however, is not a game. I was just playing. It's just a bad joke. Under the bridge. The church. Town. Speak. The white lady. Power is back. Now I can develop the role and hopefully have my questions answered. I will return to you, Martha. Together we will sort out everything. Just you and I.
dear God, so it's true. I killed my sister. I did everything to hide the truth. Then I killed my mother to rid myself of the guilt. But she was nasty and everything was her fault. God, what does that make me? I don't deserve to live a second longer. Maybe I will see her again and I can try and ask for her forgiveness. But if there is nothing after death, at least I will be free from this suffering. I know it's not right, but I can't do this anymore. It was not easy to pull that trigger, but I did. Once again, though, I was not dead. They all died in the blink of an eye, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. But for me, it seemed impossible. When I fired, I unintentionally moved the weapon enough that the bullet deviated and hit my eyebrow. I was bleeding and there was a great pain above my eye. The voices grew distant, but nothing more. I fainted and then regained consciousness not long after. I woke up tied to a seat so tightly that I couldn't feel my hands or feet. On the next to me was my father. He was breathing, but he appeared to be unconscious. The guy in charge started asking me questions. He kept hitting me in the face and head with some kind of short cane. It was so violent I thought my skull would crack open. All I could taste in my mouth was blood and broken teeth. I ran my tongue across my teeth, thinking to myself that I'd never be able to smile again. A frivolous thought perhaps, but a painful one nonetheless. Part of my top lip was cut open and was hanging down. I foolishly tried to put it back in place using my tongue and lower lip. I threw up. They forced me to confess that my father had been carrying out all kinds of activity within the German army. Of course, I didn't know anything about it, so I tried to explain. But those punches... I would have done whatever it took to stop them. Whatever it took. Just after I told them what they wanted to hear, the general said, All it took were two slaps and you sold out your father, you German whore. Then he ordered my father to be executed. It took less than a moment. He didn't even move. Then I took a blow harder than the previous ones, and I lost consciousness again. I woke up again on the ground, untied and completely empty inside. All I could feel was pain. Everyone was dead. I was now alone in the world. I felt a desire to hear th their voices one last time on Daddy's recorder in the dark room. I need to get away from here. Provided the soldiers hadn't destroyed it, that is.
Now I will wake her up and she will confess. You can bet on it. What are you doing with your father's gun? It's dangerous. Stop it. Talk. Tell me everything now. Tell me what you have done. Okay, okay. Calm down. I will tell you everything. I found that strange note when I woke up. And I immediately realized that something was wrong. Something was up with you, aside from your usual quirks. I came to check, but you weren't in your bedroom. You had spoken about the lake, called your father, and we went to see what was going on. We found you sitting in your underwear at the side of the lake. You kept saying that nothing had happened, and you kept repeating things like that. I hugged you to try and make you feel better, but you did not speak again for days. What is happening to you? You should tell me what's going on. I'm not going to that loony bin. I would never have wanted this, but I'm afraid you will harm yourself further. You were really hurting yourself in front of the piano that night. What else could we do? You killed my sister and now you're afraid because I found out. So you're making up stories, aren't you? But I'm not falling for it this time. What are you saying? Your sister. Please, no. I was not well. I didn't know what I was saying. So many years have passed. You were little then. I thought everyone had forgotten that nonsense. Shut up! Don't speak. Don't say anything else. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. I didn't know who I was anymore. Everything had fallen apart. I was afraid of myself. My God, it was terrible. I had always been convinced that I was too good for myself, but then... I had become my own enemy. I was the danger. What should I have done? I thought about the puppet theatre in my old room. There I could find something in myself, perhaps. So I rushed to go play with it again. Mummy nearly died giving birth to me. This is what remains in my memory of my mother's, nanny's and father's stories. I remember little to nothing of my childhood at home. I have to try though. Maybe the important events I should know are right there. How are you, madam? I feel a sharp pain. Do you need anything? I can feel it. The time has come. Huh? Everything is ready. Help! Something is wrong! Idit, help! Irene! 
is not well. How are you, honey? I'm getting weaker and weaker. Doctor, hurry! Arena is sick! Don't worry, Irene. The pain you feel is natural. Push, Irene, push. Sharane, push! <laughs>
Now go play with your sister. Julia, play with your sister. You're also a liar. This is too much. It's all Martha's fault. I don't believe you. I saw that. You think you're so smart. You're too good, Martha. It's not your fault. I've seen it all. Sorry, Mummy. I didn't do it on purpose. Oh, stop being a stupid child. Come with me now. Sorry, Mummy. I'm so sorry. Come with me. I will put you in your place, girl. Sorry, Mummy. I won't do it anymore. I promise. Too late. These false tears won't help you. Stay still! Now I'll make you want to bark. show you how insane I am. Help, Daddy, help! Screaming won't work. Your father is not here like usual. Eat it! I was beginning to remember, but I was so scared to remember too much. 
especially all at once. I didn't have time to guess exactly what happened. It was making me too upset. Pulling out those memories was like trying to pull out a tooth on your own. Almost impossible and far too painful. The white lady told me that the church is a safe place and home to its children. Donatilio, my priest, I have to talk to him. I have to call him on the telephone. Donatilio speaking. Who is it? Father, help me. They're all dead. Daddy, Mummy, everyone. Julia, come to me immediately. Don't stay alone. It's dangerous. Come to town. You can stay here with me and we can talk about everything. Okay? Okay, Father. But first I want to play with my puppets for a while. Julia, don't be silly. Come to church right away. Those boys, they had all been killed and it was my fault. They were my age, and a few of them were our friends. I didn't think it would go like that, but wasn't it obvious, really? What was I actually expecting? I felt like a coward, but what could I have done? Should I have betrayed my father? I loved my father, but I also loved my friend Lapo. Which side was I on? 
I just listened to my heart. I thought it was the right thing to do. But instead, it was the worst thing I could have done. I didn't go anywhere near the soldiers, Germans or allies. They had all caused me harm. I didn't want to approach anyone for any reason. I didn't go anywhere near the soldiers, Germans or allies. They had all caused me harm. I didn't want to approach anyone for any reason. Once I crossed that threshold, I completely lost touch with reality. Everyone around me had died while I survived everything. I don't remember how things went. I just remember a big light and then photographs were being taken of me. There was a man dressed in white, a doctor I presume. He was asking me questions, but I didn't understand what he was actually asking me. He wrote something on a piece of paper and then two nurses led me away. I was in the mental asylum. Some women were talking to themselves, others cried. Some were even covered in their own filth. Others were violent and tried to hurt themselves any way possible. They started to give me injections. What they gave me made my whole body shake. I broke my vertebrae and an ankle. I think it was called cardiazole or something like that. My body was like a fire that didn't want to be put out. When it appeared to be quenched, it would come back, even stronger than before. In the end, though, they won. There was no longer any need for therapy. Something inside of me had died, but nevertheless I insisted on carrying along this painful journey. I was stronger than I could ever have imagined. Who are you? Wait, wait. I want answers. Don't go away. Talk to me about Martha, please. Martha is dead. 
I killed her to take possession of her life. I will never find peace for what I have done. I feared that would be the case. And what about Mummy? I really don't know. Her death could be all my invention. Or maybe things went just as I remember. I'm consumed by doubt. What about father? The soldiers? Did that really happen? It happened. He was shot right in front of me. Fear, pain, shame. I can't remove it. I cannot relive it either. Unfortunately, I knew that already. What about Nanny? Nanny is fine. I don't even want to think that anything bad could have happened to her. Are you sure? That brings me great joy. I'm afraid to ask about Lapo. Lapo is dead. He was blown up by a landmine. He got into trouble and paid with his life. My dear friend. Poor boy. Just as I remembered, unfortunately. One last question. The pregnancy? Martha was pregnant. Her deformed baby died with her. Maybe she was in pain. That's enough now. All of these questions are pointless, aren't they? It's all inside of us. We just need to turn the mirror. Is it not all just the reflection of an unknowable existence? Nothing more than a puppet show. Ready for everything with open arms. Even ready to kill. Legs always ready to run. The womb that conceived in sin. Lastly, the mind. To protect us, it has turned us into monsters. Either way, we cannot live like this, can we? I'll take care of it. I don't need to worry. I'll try to sleep if I can. I've got this. On the 26th of July, San Casciano was bombed and the church was destroyed. But I was not there then. I was already in the asylum. Once again, stubbornly, I was not dead. The bombs hadn't killed me, and I had also survived myself. The most absurd test and the hardest one. 
The war ended some time ago now, both out there and inside of me. I was on the wrong side of the gate, but now I can turn that page. Life is opening its doors again, isn't it? If I hadn't been so lucky to survive myself, I would have thrown everything away. We think that danger is all around us, ready to attack. But the more devious and misleading dangers are the ones that are inside of us. They grow without us realizing. They make us suffer, remain confused and remove our self-respect. I would have wanted to ask for help, but I was alone. This is my story. Thank you for being here, for listening to me. Now I am ready to leave. How long will it take to get home?